is Raya Keller and on this tutorial I'll teach you how to create a lion illustration for kids in Adobe Illustrator. So let's begin. The first thing we're going to do is create a new document and begin creating our shapes. So let's go to our ellipse tool by clicking there or pressing L and let's create one that has a width and a height of 190 and press OK. I'm going to remove the stroke and assign a color that I had already selected in advance. Next, I'm going to create another ellipse. Make sure that I link both values and change the width and the height to 52. Let's make another one. This one is going to be Terry by Terry. And now let's assign the right color, so white and this dark brown. Now that I have these shapes, I'm going to move them into place. Placing them right there. And now let's create another ellipse. This one is going to be 11 by 11 and fill it with white color. And let's place it inside this dark brown circle. Next, I'm going to go to my rectangle tool, click on it and make one that has a width and a height of 25 by 9. I'll change the color to this brown color. Let's go to our direct selection tool or hit A on our keyboard and round the corners all the way to the center with the handles. Now simply let's go to our remove tool and rotate by going to one of the corners. Let's select everything and group it by going to object group, then go right click, transform, reflect, make sure that you're reflecting on your vertical axis and copy. Now you can press shift while dragging that copy and move it. Let's do the same for this eyebrow, so transform, reflect, copy, and move it around here. Now I can go and double click on this eye. You can see that I go into isolation mode and simply move that white circle. Now that I have this selected, I'm going to group them by going object group or you could also use the shortcut Control G. Let's do the same for the eyebrows, select everything. Click again on the bigger circle, you can see how the outline is thicker, indicating that now this is a key object, and then go horizontal align center. Now I'm going to go to my direct selection tool, and with this bottom anchor point, just move it a little bit to the top, so we create a shape like this. Let's go to our rectangle tool, and create one that is 27 by 9. Let's change it to the correct color, this brown. Let's make another rectangle. This one is going to be 27 by 18. And let's fill it with the right color. Select both shapes. Make sure that they align horizontally. And now I'm going to go to Window, Find Align, or you could use the shortcut Shift F7. Now here on the up, Aligned, make sure that you have Show Option selected so you can see the distributed spacing. Now select both shapes, make one the key object, make sure this value is zero, and click on this icon. Now make sure that they are aligned properly because these ones are not. Move it to the right place around there. Go to your direct selection tool, select the bottom anchor points of the brown shape and round them all the way to the center. Then let's take this one and while pressing shift and my arrow key, or actually just my arrow key, I can move it several times. So let's say two on this side and do the same on the other side with my right arrow. So just make sure that you move them the same amount of times, and then round them all the way to the center. So I'm thinking a little bit more here. And now round them like this. Now that you have the shape, we can actually spread our eyes a little bit more. Make sure that this one is grouped and align it properly. Next, we're going to create them out with our pen tool, so let's go and select it, make a point, make another point and drag, and then make another point. So we get a little curve like this one. And with your direct selection tool, you can move it around. Let's assign the right color. This one is going to be the strokes, so remove the fill. Go to stroke, 
and change the weight to 1.5 points. Now let's go to reflect, click on that anchor point, just pressing shift and alt and make a copy. Now to unite this, I can go to control white to go to my outline mode, then go to my direct selection tool and then select both anchor points and go connected selected endpoints. Now if I press control Y again, I can go back to my normal view. Now let's make sure that my caps and my corners are rounded. And now with my pen tool, I'm going to create three points like this and then a fourth one to connect it to make them out. Now let's assign the right color. Now with our pen tool, let's first go right click arrange bring to front to make this one on the right place. And also make sure that you are aligning everything. So just like this. Next, I'm going to go to my pen tool, make a point here, make another point there, and another point here. So I create this line. Now I can select both shapes, go to Window, find Pathfinder, and I'll go here to Divide. Let's go right click and ungroup and assign the right color, and again, right click, arrange, bring to front to make sure that that line is on the front. So now that we have a face, I can group it and position it on the right place, just around there. Now let's go and create an ellipse. And we're going to make this one 35 by 35. Let's change the color to the correct one. Go and rotate your ellipse so that your anchor point is facing your, your face or it's kind of touching and go with your direct selection tool and just extend it. I'll send it to back to put it in the right place. And now with my pen tool, I'm going to create the inside by making a point, making another point and dragging and close the shape. Assign the right value, select both shapes, go right click, arrange, send to back. And now I can group them by going object group or control G, go right click, transform, reflect and make a copy and take it to the other side. I can select both groups and group them and make sure that they are aligned to my face. Next, I'm going to create a polygon. So I just click there and make sure that you have enough sides to make this effect. So the right number is 14, but you can experiment with this. We can make the radius big for now, but we can change it later. So now I'm going to select it and make sure that here on the top of my width and my height that I go to 244 and let's just send it to back, assign the right color, make sure that this is aligned with the face. And then let's go distort and transform, roughen. Let's have a little preview and change the size. So I'm going to change the size to 3, make sure that this is absolute, make it smooth. And for the detail, I'm going to change this one to 1. So once that's OK, I'm going to press OK. And now let's move it and go select it, sorry, Effect, Distort and Transform, Poker and Blood. And let's go up a little preview. And you can increase this value. You can see that there you get different effects. But for now, I'm just going to go and change this one to 7. And we're going to get this very nice shape. Just position it properly with your Align tools. Now I'm going to go to my Pen tool, I'll press P on my keyboard, and let's make a point there, a point there, another point. And you can see that I make straight lines by pressing Shift, and I get a shape like this. Now all I have to do is go right-click, Transform, Reflect to make a copy, and take it by pressing Shift to the other side. So around there, we could go to our direct selection tool and select the bottom anchor points and connect them. Now this is the shape needs to be aligned. Let's use our eyedropper to pick the right color and send it back. Now with my pen tool, I'm going to create two lines. Let's make one there and change the color to this orange and increase the weight to 1.5. Let's press all and shift while dragging to make a copy. And now you can select 
both lines and group them and align everything properly. Now this one is kind of not working quite well, so I can use my arrow keys and shift to move the feet around. Now let's go to my pen tool or press P on my keyboard and let's go and create a point, then another point and drag. And then let's make another point here. And then let's make another point there to create a shape like this. Let's change the color to a darker tone of yellow and then just simply send it to back. Now that I see it on the back, I need to change to adjust this a little bit, but it's going to be the same shape. Now let's go click on this, right click, transform, reflect and make a copy to the other side. I can select both of them, group them and make sure that they are aligned properly. Next, I'm going to go to my pen tool and let's make a point and let's drag a little bit. Make sure that the stroke is thick enough, so let's change the weight to something thicker, like four points. And now let's change the color and send it to back. And now with my ellipse tool, I'm going to create a circle right there. Change the color to brown. And just click and drag one of the anchor points after rotating it. So now I get the tail. And let's position it on the right place. Next, I'm going to go with my pen tool and simply create a point and another point on a diagonal line. Then as before, right click, transform, reflect and make a copy. Take it to the other side and just unite the anchor points with your direct selection tool. So now that that shape is right there, I can assign the right color. So let's go and change this one to this dark green. Now after I align it, I'm going to create a line. So just with my pen tool, let's create another one around there. Now I can group both of them, make sure that I align it to my main shape, select everything and go divide. That way now you have three pieces, right click on group and change the color of that middle piece to a lighter green. Now let's create a star, so you can make a star like this. Sample the right color and align it to that dark, sorry, the light green shape. Let's create an ellipse tool that goes here below the this little podium that we just did. So let's go right click, so re select. Send it back and position it in place with this middle shape. Now that we have this, let's add a little bit of, of a shadow. So I'm just pressing Alt while dragging this shape. I'm going to select the color to this purple. Then I'm going to go find my transparency and if you don't see any of the windows, all you have to do is go window and find it them in here. So I can find my transparency, go there and change it to overlay and that's okay. So now I'm going to select this and the ears, then go edit, cut, or you could use the shortcut control X, select the, the brown shape and then go right there and go draw inside mode and then paste in place. And now you can go back to draw normal. Now let's repeat this process with our eyebrows, so just press ALT while dragging to make a copy, change the color to this brown or you could sample it with your eyedropper, CTRL X, go to that shape, draw inside mode, CTRL SHIFT B to paste in place and just double click to go outside that mode. Let's do the same with this brown shape, so double click on that one to go and isolate it and just there press CTRL C this time, CTRL SHIFT B to paste it in place add the right color and the overlaid mode so you can see around where you can place it and use the same technique control x draw inside mode control shift b so i think a little bit more would help there and also i could show a little bit less of my legs so now I'm going to create a line right here on the middle. 
make sure that it covers everything change the color and go to overlay this is not working quite well so i can go back to the purple i think that's okay for now so i'm just gonna select the shape select the star and then go Control x go draw in side mode Control shift b to paste in place and do the same for this other shape And all we have to do is select our lion, group it by going to object group, make sure that you're aligning to your artboard and just go horizontal and vertical line center. And with this you have your illustration of a lion. I hope you have enjoyed this tutorial. Thank you very much for watching. See you next time.